All right, starting out in Godot here, I'm gonna click uh, 2D up at the top, middle mouse button, click and drag to move around, scroll wheel to zoom in, let's click 2D scene here, rename that to world, control S, save, and let's go to project, project settings, scroll down to uh, physics, layer names, 2D physics, name layer one to environment, and layer two to characters, and then we can go to input map here, let's add in move up, move down, move left, move right and shoot, restart and exit. Then on each of these, click the plus, W for up, S for down, A for left, R for right, and for shoot, we click mouse button, left mouse button, okay, restart, click R, exit, click escape, and that's all for that. And we can also go, if you want, on general, under environment, you can change the background color if you like. I'm fine with this, I'm gonna have a floor. So what we're gonna do is, under here, let's go ahead and drag in all of our assets here. So we can just drag them all in, like so. And I'm gonna drag, let's see, create, either by pressing Control A or by pressing the plus sign. We can create a new node. I'm gonna create Node 2D, name it Environment. And under here, we can just drag in white square here make that a child of that. I'm gonna call this floor. I can go to visibility, modulate. If I do self-modulate, it changes this. If I do modulate, it changes this and all of its children. Um, I'm just gonna do self-modulate for this. So let's just make it kind of a little bit of a lighter color, maybe add a little tinge to it or something. That's fine. Also ordering, I'm gonna set the Z index to negative two, just so it's below everything. And if I hit Q, or click select mode here. I can just drag out the size or I can hold shift to make it um, scale uh, uniformly or hold alt to make it scale around the center point. So I'll just scale this out, that's fine. And then we can just drag in another one of these squares. I'll call this uh, block and control A, static body 2D, control A, collision shape 2D. Let's add on a rectangle shape, hit F to center on it, scroll in here, hold Alt, drag it out. There we go, cover the whole thing. Block, visibility, modulate, set it to be black, and then uh, make it a child of the environment. Now um, I can hit W, switch to move node, Control D, and just move it around, create a bunch of duplicates. There we go, that's the environment. Okay, now plus, let's create other nodes, search for character body 2D. So this is the physics node that you wanna use when you're creating characters. I'll rename this to player and save that. And then node groups, put this in the player group. Go back to the inspector. Let's add in a collision shape here, shape, circle, and let's add another node. Call this graphics and add a sprite. 2D and I'll put on the shooter sprite on that one. I'll name this Alive Graphics and I'll duplicate, make another one called Dead Graphics and put the dead body on that. And I'm gonna set the visibility on this or the ordering to be a uh, negative one just so it's below everything. And also I wanna add on this blood splatter sprite, make that a child of that. Visibility, show behind parents, set modulate to uh, red over here and just make that like a nice dark red of blood, maybe E to rotate it and move it around a bit. I'll just hide the death graphics there. Okay, next up, uh, we're gonna need a Raycast 2D here. Uh, make sure to set the collision mass so it collides with characters. Also on our player, collision, set it to be on the characters layer and the mass to do layers one and two. If you click the dots here, you can check them by name. If you hover, it shows what the name for that layer bit is. So in this case, in Godot, if you the layer is what you are and the mask is what you collide with. So in this case, we are character layer and we collide with everything on environment and characters um, layers. So now um, I also wanna add in audio stream player and I'll call this death sound and let's go to audio here and let's add a bus called sound effects or SFX and on the desk sound we can set the bus to be sound effects. Always good practice to put your sound effects on a separate bus so you can adjust their audio uh, levels independently. Also on a raycast set the Y to negative 1000 and let's adjust it to be over there just in line with the gun. Also our collision shape 
we can adjust the size and let's move the alive graphics up a bit. Uh, if I control click, I can select two nodes. So there we go, we're lined up, good to go. That's our hitbox. Create one more sound by duplicating, call this shoot sound and put on the shotgun shot. If I hit play, you can hear what it sounds like. Um, oh, we need to put our death sound on there. So that's good, that's working. All right, one more thing we need to add in the sprite for the muzzle flash. So I'll just call that muzzle flash. Uh, put on the muzzle flash sprite here, and let's move that to be on top of the gun. Visibility modulate, set it to be uh, something yellow, and maybe a little darker in the yellow, something around there, that's good. Add a timer as a child and one shot, set the wait time to like 0 0.05, something really small. And we can do node signals timeout. So the timeout signal is called when, or emitted when the timer uh, runs out of time. So if we click connect, we can click advanced, click uh, muzzle flash and type in hide for the receiver method, connect. Now when the timer finishes, it'll hide the muzzle flash. Also let's hide the muzzle flash for now. And finally, we need to add in our UI. So canvas layer and Control A, add a control node. So the green control nodes are for UI. If I zoom out, you can see this uh, square here is where the UI goes. Click this anchor preset, make it full screen. Control A, let's add a color rect. Also make that full screen, set the color to be black, fade it out. And then let's add in a panel with a label as a child and a button as a child. And we can also rename this to death screen center the panel and let's just make it a little bigger and label will say you died and center that to the top and move that down a bit. The button will say restart, center that to the bottom, move it up a little bit, uh, maybe make the panel a little bigger. There we go. And now we can hide the death screen. Finally, add a camera 2D node. So this makes so um, the camera falls around the player. Make sure to check ignore rotation because the player's gonna rotate. We don't wanna rotate our camera and make sure the camera's enabled, otherwise it won't render. All right, now we can add the script for the player. Um, I don't wanna use the template, so I'm gonna uncheck that. Now, come in here, we wanna do a reference to our Raycast. So just drag that and then hold control and drop it off. Also gonna do export var move. Uh, move speed equals 200 so export means you can edit it in the inspector see over here and on ready means um, when ready is called when the node enters the scene or the game starts it will um, run this so it's just going to get that reference to the raycast 2d node and um, move speed is in pixels per second also we're going to have a reference to just a boolean if we're dead or not and we're going to do function process Processes like update from Unity runs every frame. So we're gonna do if input dot is uh, action just pressed um, exit. We'll do get tree dot quit. So exit the game. And if we press restart, then we do get tree dot. Oh, actually, uh, reload current scene. But we want to have a separate method for this. So I'm gonna do function restart and we can put that over here and call this over here and we can go to our button over here and click node button up connect and connect yeah on player connect to restart there we go now when you press the button the game restarts then uh, if dead return because now we're going to do our actual gameplay code. We don't want to be able to press these buttons while we're dead. So we're going to set our global uh, rotation to equal. We want to get the uh, global position dot direction to get a global mouse position. And then we get the angle. So a vector pointing to from us to the mouse, convert that to an angle and then add pi divided by two. So basically if we didn't add two, it would assume that um, this to the right is the direction the player is facing. And so we'd always be looking, you know, off to perpendicular of the mouse direction. So if we just add uh, pi divided by two, which is the radians equivalent of 90 degrees, then we'll face towards the mouse cursor. Then we want to do if input dot is action just pressed shoot. We want to call a shoot method. So let's just add that in function shoot. 
and we can go ahead and put that there and pass is just sort of a blank code line. So I just put it there to prevent syntax errors. So um, now we want to do our movement code next function physics process. And we're going to do if we're dead, return, don't do anything for now we get a uh, move direction. So that's going to be input dot get vector. So and then we're going to add in move left, move right, move up and move down. And then we just set our velocity to equal move direction times move speed. And velocity is a built in field in character body, which determines um, its movement speed. But to then to actually move, we have to call move and slide, which um, handles moving us. And if we collide with something at an angle, we'll slide along it. Um, then we want to do kill. So, uh, well, first off, if we're already dead, don't do anything. Otherwise, dead equals true. And so this determines what happens when we die. So we want to play our death sound. And by doing dollar sign and then the path to the node, it gets a reference to that node. And then we can do uh, dead uh, graphics dead dot show. So we want to show that and graphics um, alive hide and then death screen dot show. And then finally, let's set our index to equal negative one. So that way we're underneath any characters when we die. Um, now let's do um, our shoot code. So we're going to do muzzle flash dot show and timer dot start. And then we're going to do shoot sound dot play. And we want to check if our raycast 2D dot is colliding and dot get collider dot has method kill. Then we do uh, get collider dot kill. There we go. Okay, so that is all of our player code. Let's go back to the world here. And we can either click this or hit control shift A and add in our player. We can uh, oops, move the player around here, hit F5 to run the scene. We need to define a main scene, so select current. And we can test, and looks like we can move around. And we can shoot, and you can kind of see the muzzle flash. Uh, I think the background's a little too bright. Maybe I'll just make it a little dimmer. Yeah, and a little less saturated. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and now uh, we want to create our enemy. So I'm going to create a new node, character body, name it a zombie set of its collision layers and save it and add a collision shape. And uh, let's just copy our graphics over. And we also we want to change the alive. If I had F, I can snap to it. Um, let's change the alive one to be zombie and move it up a bit. And then collision shape, uh, circle shape, change that. And then Let's go ahead and add in a raycast also and set that to be negative 70 on the Y. So if this touches the player, the player will die. And then finally, I want to add in an audio stream player 2D. So this is spatial audio, so it'll play louder or quieter depending on how far away this is. And we're going to add in a monster die sound, set the sound effects layer. So I move over. You can hear it's on the left now and it's a little quieter. Rename that to death sound and then add a script. And in here, first thing we want is reference to the raycast, export var move speed, uh, let's say 100. And we want on ready var player and character body 2D equals get tree dot get first node in group player. So in this case, we have optional typing here that lets the editor know that this player is a character body 2D node. So that way we can do auto completing easier or it'll allow more auto completing options as we're typing and it'll do it on ready. So make sure that the player is already um, existing in the scene. Uh, and then finally, we want to do var dead equals false. And then we're going to do uh, function physics process if dead return uh, otherwise, we want a direction to the player, and that's going to equal our global position dot 
direction to player dot global position and then set our velocity equal to direction to player times move speed and then call move and slide and then finally we want to do global rotation equals direction to player dot angle plus pi divided by two and then just check if the raycast is colliding and just dot get collider is equal to the player and player dot kill then we need to write a kill method here we can just copy the players for the most part so that and then don't show the death screen but we do need to disable collision dot disable oops disabled equals true uh, now go ahead back to our world and let's add in the zombie add a bunch of them hit f5 if one of them touches me um i don't die i messed up so somehow i messed up my collision here so here's how we can test it so if i click debug up here we can do visible collision shapes and we can see um, what happens so um, you can see it shows a line when they collide with something and right now it's showing that it's not colliding with the player so I must have set up something wrong on the player. If we look over here, we have the layer right, we have the mask right on everything. And on the zombie, we have the layer right, we have the mask right. Check the raycast. We forgot to set character on the collision mask. So let's check that. We go back and uh, let me turn off that debug real quick. And we go back, F5, run that. And I died. There we go. And if I hit R, I restart. And if I had escape, the game closes. And yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, also, if you want to full screen, you'll notice that the camera is very zoomed out when we full screen. So we go to project, project settings, window, and we can do, uh, well, first we can set it to default to full screen and we can do mode uh, viewport. And then if I hit F5, it stays uh, zoomed in though it is a little, you can see it's a little pixelated there because our sprites are low resolution. But yeah, it works. Good to go. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about Godot, check out my retro 3D FPS course in Godot that is on Udemy. Link in the description. I'm currently updating it to Godot 4 and uploading videos regularly there.